You know, I was sitting here thinking, going through, you guys are always calling, always sending emails, asking, will our Hellcat parts work in the Hellcat Pro? Will it work in a regular Hellcat? Will it work when the Hellcat with the film safety without film safety? Of course it does. And I'm sitting there, I'm wondering to myself, like, doesn't our video cover all that? Like, the video we have on YouTube? Don't we have one on YouTube? So you're telling me we ain't got a video about all of our Hellcat parts? This stuff's been out, what, seven, eight months? And nobody knows that the Pro Bundle comes with our Hellcat flat trigger. This flat trigger is made out of 6061 aluminum. It's a lot better than the plastic one. That metal really gives you a nice, good, comfortable, sturdy feeling. One of the biggest complaints a lot of our customers had is that, hey, with the plastic trigger, they get a little pinch. You know, when they put their finger on it, it ah, no pinch. We went ahead, made a crossbar that comes all the way down in front of that safety blade. So when you're coming through, it eliminates any of that pinching that you may or may not be getting. Inside this little package, you're gonna get the fixture. That fixture, so when you set up the trigger and you, you know put it on your trigger bar, you can actually go through and adjust the pre-travel. Might wanna reduce the pre-travel, some of you don't. It's completely up to you. I mean, this is just straight blasphemy, all right? I'm tired of it. What if somebody's going through like, hey, I wanna know what's in the bundle, but we ain't got a video. How are they supposed to know that? Also in the Pro Bundle is going to be our titanium striker that's right titanium just as strong sturdy and reliable as the steel one that's in there however since it's titanium it's gonna be a lot lighter on top of that our engineers went through and the connecting lug face that locks onto the sear instead of it being a sharp thing like that it's actually slanted that way you get to reduce some of that creep a little bit of that extra pull boom we completely eliminate in this package it's actually going to come with our lighter springs so it's going to reduce your trigger pull weight overall it's going to be a nice clean crisp beautiful feeling do we even have an install video on this bundle this is stuff that makes me want to get violent i'll do it myself all right, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's, uh, it's me, it's Ken. You know, I apologize for that outburst you may have just seen. We're going to get into the installation of this Pro Bundle here. So some of the things that you're going to need is one, a Hellcat. As stated before, it'll work with the Pro or anything else. Right here, I have the Pro. It'll also work with the models with or without a thumb safety. Safety glasses, PTFE lube, really does help with some lubricity and smoothing things out. You will need some Loctite. We sell 242 Blue, and this is the one you know I use on a regular basis. You're going to need a hammer, some kind of hammer tool, a 330 seconds punch, a 1 16th punch, a block. If you don't have a block, you know, a roll of tape or something you can use as a bench block. And then the M Carbo all-in-one pro bundle for the Hellcat. First things first, ladies and gentlemen, when we get our firearm, let's go ahead and clear it. So you're gonna lock this to the rear. You can check in here. Okay, we got no magazine, nothing in here. There's no rounds. You got nothing in the chamber. I mean, this thing's clear as clear can be. We are going to do a trigger pull test to see where we're starting. Fair warning, our firearms have been taken apart several hundred times and they have been shot. So any readings we get might be slightly different than yours. If something seems a little different or a little off, don't panic. You know, you can always shoot us a call, give us an email, but more than likely, if your firearm's newer, it is gonna be a little tougher to work on. Five pounds, three ounces. Pounds three ounces. Pounds five ounces. All right, five pound four. Let's do an average. Five pounds three ounces. Right there, almost four. Five pounds three point eight ounces. Uh, once again, this gun has been shot plenty, plenty, plenty times. On average, usually all the ones I get in are usually six and a half to seven pounds. I'd say the average across the board is going to be six pounds, you know, like 12 to 13 ounces starting. Once we put our kit in, it's going to drop down lower. When you get the kit, it's going to come in one big baggie. You're going to have these little ones. And this one, you're going to have the striker assembly. And then you're going to have the extra little springs down here. And then you're going to get a little pamphlet. So if you don't want to follow the video, rather read or hold the little pamphlet in hand, we do have an instructional pamphlet on how to do the installation for the striker assembly. And this one, you're going to get your flat trigger. Okay, it's going to come with some extra little parts and tools on the inside. And it's going to come with a little fixture to help you really set in that pre-travel set screw. In here, we're also going to have a uh, little instruction manual for the flat trigger as well. As you can see, it's nice, it's printed, it's in color. Very nice. All right, with our firearm in hand, okay, right? Just triple clearing. You always want to make sure it's clear. Never assume. We're going to lock the slide to the rear. All right, you're going to take this here takedown lever, and you're going to just push her up. Now, for some, it might be a little stiff. You might have to uh, put a little MAN behind it, but once you get it up there, all right, maintaining pressure on the slide, release the slide lock down here. Come forward. You're going to want to pull the trigger. 
and the slide will come right off, just like that. All right, we're gonna put that aside. We're gonna start with the slide assembly. All right, so we're gonna come over here. We're gonna remove your recoil system. We're gonna take your barrel and remove that, set that aside. On here, you have two things pushing up against this back plate. Okay, one, you have this plastic striker sleeve, which our system replaces, and then you're gonna have this detent right here, or plunger is gonna be put in pressure. That plunger comes down in here, it's under spring, where you find another plunger and your extractor. All right, it's one system. Keeping that in mind, you're gonna push down, depress, okay, the striker sleeve just a little bit, and you're gonna to wanna to kinda of push and get that going. Now, don't force it, because like I said, this is under tension, right? You come here, everything's gonna go flying. One reason we wear iPro, because if you take that to the eye, you're gonna have a bad day. So once I get it started, I usually cover it with one thumb or two, and then try and wiggle her out, you know? Maintaining pressure with this thumb, just wiggle her out, you know? There's more than one way to skin this cat. So, wiggle her out a little bit, maybe put a little pressure with a punch behind here, and then get her to come out. Well, maybe, if I can get her to come out, I'm gonna depress this a little bit. There we go. All right, and release. There she is. As you can see, this is very stiff. Pull that straight out. You don't want to take that to the eye. Now here, I'm just gonna pull this this way. Okay, now note, I took my thumb, I covered this plunger. Chances are this plunger's not gonna come out because the extractor's in the way. However, stranger things have happened. So, maintaining my thumb over this, all right, I'm gonna depress it a little bit, and I'm gonna wiggle this extractor. Okay, give it a little wiggling, she'll come on out. Thumb still over, okay, the striker block. Now I'm gonna slowly release. I'm gonna dump her out, like so. So we got a spring, striker block, got a striker assembly, extractor, and then you have your extractor plunger, plunger spring. At this point, we're gonna move on along. Go ahead, take our striker apart. Now if you take a comparison, look at these, these are nice, right? You can actually go ahead and take in the nice stainless steel striker sleeve compared to the little plastic one here. If you look at the locking surfaces here on the striker lug, this is what meets your sear engagement. You can really see right here how this slants down. Our engineers designed that slant to help reduce some of that extra creep to shorten up that pole a little bit. It does make things a little bit smoother. Okay, so you see how straight that one is and now on top of that, we went ahead and ours is titanium. That titanium is gonna be just as strong and durable as the steel one, but it's gonna be a lot lighter. So running a lighter spring on here with the lighter striker, it's really gonna help lighten that pull, as well as decrease your chances of light primer strikes, as well as primer drag, which you can see here. Go ahead, we're gonna take this, we're gonna set it to the side, put our striker here. So one for one swap. Once you have this, next thing we need to replace is this spring. So you come over to the spring kit here, get a sear spring, safety spring. That safety spring isn't for your thumb safety. The safety spring is for the safety block and or striker block. If you're doing polishing, you can go ahead and you can polish up uh, the surfaces on here. You can take a look. Sometimes you can see where they rub up against the slide and those are gonna be the areas you're gonna to wanna to polish up. This one actually looks pretty nice. Come over here, striker block spring. That's how it looks and that's how you're gonna put it in the slide. One for one swap. We're gonna take this safety spring, take this one, set it to the side. A bit of grease I was talking about. You can put a little bit of grease on here. All right, boop, ooh, that's, that's a lot. That's all right, because that sometimes helps stick on there just like that. This little shelf it's gonna be for your striker. There's this long, smooth side. It's gonna be for your extractor. So I'm gonna put this in here, like so. I'm gonna start the decompression. You have this nipple here on the extractor face. This is the part that catches on your cartridge. That needs to hook into the slide, and then you can come forward and put it in like that. See how I just rolled it in place? Let's do it from this angle. Right, because if you're holding it with your thumb, the plunger, you're gonna take this nipple, this one right here, in the slide, roll it forward. Now you can slowly release on that plunger. Don't take your thumb all the way away, just in case uh, she wants to get away from you. I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna take our striker assembly. Okay, I'm gonna start to push this in place. Just like so, all right? It starts to go in place. You want to decompress on this block, get that to go forward a little bit. All right, 
See, and she's gonna wanna keep popping up like that. That's how that works. This can't go all the way, right? Or your striker can't go all the way until you depress this plunger. So that stops here, depress the plunger, and now it goes further. I'm gonna go ahead and take this. If you recall, this goes down here on your extractor, okay? So this plunger, if you remember, it's got the little dimple in here, and it's got this little cutout. That is gonna be where your back plate fits in. So that's gonna sit right in there. This end, with this little shelf, that needs to go over your extractor. So I'm gonna put it in, all right? Just hand tension, and you can actually see in here, okay? See it, boop, boop, boop. All right, if you have it the wrong way, it's not gonna fit over there. Once you get it twisted in the right direction, it'll fit. Now, we can go ahead and start decompressing this. So I like to press this down a little bit, get the plate on there, okay? Now it's held in place. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a punch, or something I can depress this plunger with, and then slide that forward. She's locked in place, just like that. And that's how you do your slide assembly. Continue reassembly. Bam, beautiful, set her aside. Now that we have the slide assembly done, you should have three things left. You should have your frame, an FCU, fire control unit. You should have the sear spring, then you should have your trigger all in the little package here. We're gonna go ahead and take this. It should look like this. Just kind of remember how everything's orientated. If you look here, you got your actual sear. If you're holding it, right, this is towards your target. This is towards your chest. If you notice the sear, it's like a ramp. Ramps towards you. That's going to be something that we need to pay attention to upon reassembly. If you look over here, left side of the gun, okay, this is your slide stop. Okay, pushes up. There's this little spring. The spring gives that tension. So when you push up, flips it down. So when you, we do the reassembly, if this is underneath, you're not gonna have that tension. So this is something you need to pay attention to. Uh, one of the things we're gonna do, we're gonna remove this take down lever. All right, should be able to just pull, twist a little bit, come off just like so. Okay, now we're gonna come here on the front and get my bench block. You have two pins here. This big pin goes through your extractor it goes through your trigger and it also goes through this housing and it goes through this piece down here. As you see it's moving. All right, this little pin just comes right across the top, right, right through here and it sits right above the spring. So the spring's gonna go under that pin over here, right? That way you get that, that canting motion and that tension. Push this out. Some of them you can just push out like so, sitting on over here and take it out with my hand. Others, you might need to utilize your hammering tool. For most, it's a nice little nylon or brass hammer. For some of you, you know, it's probably gonna be a crescent wrench, you know, <laughs> we've all been there. All right, we're gonna remove this front screw right here. Boop, just like so. This one punches straight out. This pin that sits right here has two little lines, okay? It's gonna be different than this pin in the rear. So if you look, two lines, and this pin tends to be a brownish color, brown in the front. We'll take this pin, you can push this one out too probably, Boop, just like that. Okay, this one, it's gonna have three, three slots. So the one in the front has two, the one in the back has three. All right, this pin also happens to be darker. I don't know if we can do a side by side here. All right, but in person, one's gonna be a brown color, the other one is gonna be more blue blackish. Once we have those pins out, you can just start removing things. If yours has the thumb safety, use caution when removing it because the only thing that holds that detent and detent spring for your thumb safety in place is this frame and God's will. So use caution when removing it if you have the thumb safety. If you do have a thumb safety on yours and you would like to see the removal, you know, of this back piece with the thumb safety and, you know, the detent spring, on our support website, we do have a little video for that. I wanna say it's two to three minutes long. Somewhere in the description on the main page, you will also probably find a link directly towards that. At this point, we're gonna move this point forward, move this part in the forward up and out, okay? So this whole block comes off, and as you saw, you got this little spring here. The spring's got this little detent, or this little uh, leg or nipple, as I like to call it. That fits in this tiny, tiny little hole right there. It's orientated in this fashion. This flat spring here is gonna sit on top of your slide stop. That's what's gonna give that tension. Here you can remove your slide stop, and then you can start to remove the trigger, this housing, and then this little piece right here. And now you just have a empty frame. The only thing that should still be on this is gonna be your number plate and then your 
mag release, which if you guys are uh, interested in extended mag release, please let us know. Over here, you're gonna have your trigger as well as your sear housing and assembly. Make sure you take note of the way the sear spring's sitting here. If you're looking on here, you can see this little gap. Okay, so S down and then on the sear spring pin here in the back, this retaining pin, S up. So S down on your sear, sear S down. There's a lot of S's there, sear S down on Sear. To remove your trigger and trigger bar assembly, you're just going to pull forward. So you can see in here the sear is wanting to move a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. You're going to take this, move it like so. Pops right on out. Okay, right here we have the trigger, trigger assembly. So if you look on here, you know a lot of them, you can actually go through and see the little wear marks and where it's discolored. That is where it's going to be rubbing, like all through here. You can see that. That's where you're gonna get your friction. So at this point, if you are doing a polish job, you wanna hit those witness marks, okay? That's what we call them, witness marks. You can see all the, the rubbing all ooh, right here. Yeah, this whole bar could use a good polish job. We're gonna take our punch block. There's a little roll pin here. If you have a roll pin punch, I would recommend that. A lot of people don't, so I'm using just a standard 1 16th punch. As you can see, roll pin right here. Okay, that's the one we're removing, not this one. Solid one stays, roll pin goes. Just align that, take your little punchy poo. Bam, sis, just like that. Now you should have your trigger, trigger assembly, which is going to be the safety, safety spring, safety spring pin over here. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. Here you have this. A lot of times, ooh, like here, you can see where the trigger rubs right on the bar, trigger itself. So that'd be a good place to polish up as well. That way when the trigger rotates on this piece, you don't get any of that extra grit feeling. We're gonna go ahead, gonna open up the trigger assembly. In here, you're gonna have a little fixture. You're gonna have your trigger. In this tiny little baggie, you're gonna have a replacement roll pin. So remember, trash roll pin set to the side, replacement roll pin, as well as a set screw. And then you're gonna get a little Allen key so you can adjust that set screw. That set screw is gonna set your pre-travel on this trigger. Now, once again, you don't have to put it in there. That's one question we get all the time. Customer, do I have to put it in there and get it to work? No, the answer is no. You don't have to have that in there. You can just run it with the stock length of pull if you would like. For those of you who like to shoot competition or just wanna reduce the amount of pre-travel, go ahead and use that screw. When you use that screw, you're going to watch me go through and use our blue 242 Loctite. You're gonna ask yourself why. I'm gonna tell you why. Because that screw is gonna travel through the vibrations while you're shooting it. What's gonna happen is this sits in here like this. You're gonna have your set screw, and that set screw is gonna keep pushing and pushing, and you're gonna pull the trigger, and then it's not gonna be able to go forward because the set screw's in the way. I'm gonna take this fixture, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna insert this trigger in here. As you can see, there's a big nipple here, big hole. Big nipple, big hole. Male and female, bam, just like that. Once it's set in here, this fixture is mainly used to set your set screw. I like to use it so I can get a better purchase on my trigger assembly and set in this trigger bar. So if you see that little hole, you're gonna wanna put it in this little hole. Little hole, little hole. All right, if you set it in, you're gonna wanna line it up. Now this part's a little tricky, okay? I might make it seem like it's gonna be super easy and that it's done super quick, but uh, who knows, I could actually be here for 10 minutes hammering away at this. All right, so I'm trying to preset this pin just a little bit. I'm gonna lightly tap it to try and get it to seat and get started. All right, now that it's seated, I'm gonna try and put my trigger bar on here, tap it a little more. All right, so I can feel it starting to catch. All right, and so you're gonna want to try and align where that hole would be. As you can see, trigger's here, of the trigger bar sitting. Oh, did we get it? I think we got it. I'm gonna use my 1 16th punch. I'm gonna seat this the rest of the way. All right, that's looking good. Now look at that. She's on there, folks. Now, the maximum, maximum travel you can do is all the way down here. Our engineers are smart enough to know. Put a little shelf here, so you can only put this so far. That being said, because that screw does like to move, use a little Loctite. I, myself, I put the screw all the way in until this can't go down any further, and then I back it up a couple turns. That's just me personally. Once again, this is your firearm. You can do as you will. Take a little bit of Loctite. Put a little boop, 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 boop. Got a nice little puddle. Put the Allen key on here. Got my puddle, little puddle. 242 Loctite. 
and just roll around on there. See, just roll it around. I'm gonna take that, put it in there, and get this started. If you push the uh, trigger bar all the way up while you spin this, you can actually feel the set screw meet it. So you're gonna keep spinning this. You can actually see it spin down. Bam. So I can't push up. Okay, can't push down. She's on there. So what I like to do is from here, back it up one turn, one full rotation like that. Let's see, got a little wiggle room. So I got room to play. I got room to play with. If you want the maximum, I put it all the way down and then back it up, you know, quarter turn a little bit and then do the complete the installation. If you want a lot of removal of the pre-travel, but not all of it, you can do what I did where I did one full rotation or two. Once again, folks, this is a you thing, whatever you are comfortable with. If you use my method, put a little Loctite on there, you're gonna want something to clean it up with. So I use these little microfiber towels that we, we have here at work, love them. We're done with our trigger. We're gonna set that aside, let that Loctite sit a little bit. We're gonna move on to, bang, our sear housing. We got our sear in here, all right. Bam, it's all dangly. And as we recall, when you go to put this back in here, remember S down, okay? And you're gonna wanna put the ramp up towards you. So if you're holding it, ramp towards you. Okay, another one to think of it is here on the right side is where your trigger bar goes. Right side of the sear has these cutouts for your trigger bar. This is pretty simple, all right? There's a gap there. You're just gonna wanna take this, pull it out. Okay, if you don't want to work with it in your hands like this, you can go ahead and you can knock this pin out. The sear pin is headed. So there's a head here, big side, small side. Push the small side towards the big side. Okay, she'll come out just like this. So here you can remove this. Remember, top, bottom, you're going to want your sear spring down. Okay, so when we remove this one, oh, come on, get through there. All right, so once we get this off of here, Set that aside, you can come over here, get your replacement sear spring. Now, if you notice, you have a solid loop and then you have the S shape on our sear spring. See, S shape, solid loop. Solid loop is gonna be for your sear pin and the S is gonna be for your sear. Now, what did we talk about before? S down. So top, bottom, you're gonna want it the S down. So, you can come through here, put it through, S down. Top is here, bottom's here, S down. I'm gonna let that be all dangly. Take this pin. Now, this is a headed pin. You can only go on one side. So if you look, you got one, one side's one side, the other side's the other. So, small part of your pin in the big hole. And go ahead, put your little loop on there. All right, we're gonna get that pin seated. Bam, just like that. Now that that's nice and seated, it's in there. Well, you don't want it to go all the way through because it'll get caught, there we go. All right, now we're gonna take our sear and we'll push it in here just like so. And if you're holding it like this, here's the rear, ramp towards you. All right, front of the gun, ramp towards you. Rear, cool. So once you have it set up like that, okay, you're gonna use your trigger, take your trigger bar, you're gonna take this long end and you're gonna put it in this hole, okay? And you're gonna pull on your sear while pushing in, and you should, you know, you might have to use your other fingers or some other tools, get it to seat all the way. Now, you're gonna have to play with it, okay? It's not gonna be a one done thing, or it might be if yours is cooperative. Bam, there we go, got her seated. Cool, see, and then it rides, nice and smooth. Reassembly, go ahead, we're gonna take this piece. It's gonna sit on the right side of the frame, so, Back gun towards you, front of gun this way, right side of the frame. This is going to sit over here. We're going to take our trigger assembly and sear housing. It's going to sit in here. Put the trigger down, get it to go in that hole in the front. Push this down and towards the rear. Okay, this should lock into place in the back and you should be able to pull up. It's not coming out. Okay, then if you look through here, the hole that goes all the way through should be aligned with both parts. At this point, so things don't slip out, I like to go ahead and seat this pin, okay? You can wait till the end, you can do it now. There's more than one way to skin this cat. Remember, the pin that goes in the back has three little bits, and it's usually solid black or a bluish black. Bamses, just like so. All right, next, we're gonna take our slide stop. Slide stop's gonna come right in here. 
This is the part that you use with your thumb. Push up and down, and it's going to fit right in this little groove section. I'm going to move on to this piece. This is where things get a little tricky for some. All right, once this is seated in here, okay, this is your feed ramp. Little feed ramp right here towards the back of the gun. So, got the spring. You're going to want that spring. You're going to put this in here. All right, and it's that spring is going to sit on top of your slide stop. Now, if you're like, how do I know where to put it? If you look here on the front end, you got these two tracks. So here's a track here, track here, and then in the frame, you have these slots. See, track and track, slot and slot. She's gonna sit in there and she's gonna ride straight down. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take the trigger pin. This is the big fat one. I am going to insert it from the right to left. You can do it however you want. I find it to be easier because you see these little grooves on here? These two pieces, that silver piece here and your slide stop here, will catch on there and cause issues. So everything's lined up. I'm gonna start to push it in. All right, bam. Once it gets here, you might have to wiggle, right? You might have to wiggle your slide stop a little bit. There we go, to go through. And she's seated. Last thing we have, okay, is this front pin. So if you look in here, you might be able to see the top of the spring, all right? So you're gonna want that to be down towards the bottom of the hole. Bottom hole, top of the spring needs to be down towards the bottom of the hole. This pin is gonna slide right over it. And you might be able to push it through. You'll see this is beveled or chamfered, however you'd like to say that. That should help you go right over that spring. There we go, bam. Then just do a little tap, make sure everything's seated, each pin. There we go. Now, we're gonna have to install the takedown lever. I like to put her in, all right. Back end towards me, and I kinda just take it, and I just start pushing through, rotating a little bit. Turn it up, get it in here, push in down, and you should be able to get it to just snap in place. Just like so. Locked, unlocked, locked, unlocked. There we go. Pop her up. Trigger's pulled to the rear. Everything's set. We're going to go ahead and install the slide assembly. Put the slide on there. Lock it. Bamses. Passes functions check. Oh yeah, got, a, got rid of a lot of that pre-travel. It's nice and smooth. Feels a lot better than that plastic trigger, that's for sure. All right, let's do trigger pull test. Okay, first pull. Let me go get that safety blade pinched. Ooh, four pounds, two ounces. Four pounds, four pounds, four pounds, one ounce, and one more. All right, four pounds, almost four pounds, one ounce was the, the average. Now, once again, this firearm has been shot a lot, has been taken down, so it's going to be a little looser on the inside. Most of the ones I get in are sitting about six and a half to seven pounds starting. I usually get it to about four and a half pounds after installing our kit. Now, I'd recommend, you know, after you do an installation, it passes functions check. Go ahead and uh, put some rounds down range. This is uh, Ken with M Carbo. If you have any further questions, you know, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email. Have a great day.